Hi, I'm Tom, coming to you from the Don't Screw It Up World Headquarters and Workshop in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland is also the home of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm wearing the hat to prove it. Today, I am going to show you one of my greatest inventions of all time. This is the ultimate rain barrel irrigation system. I devised this system over 10 years of trial and error, and today I'm going to share with you everything I know about rainwater collection and irrigation. I'll give you a high level overview of the system and then I'll talk you through all the details. First, this system consists of four primary parts. Part one is rainwater collection. I have two 75 gallon rain barrels, that's 150 gallons together. That's 568 liters for the 175 countries that use the metric system, unlike the one I live in. I collect water off the roof of this workshop. It comes down through my downspout through a seasonal diverter, so I can turn it on in the summer, off in the winter. Fills up one rain barrel, when that one fills up, goes to the second rain barrel, when that one fills up, goes into an overflow, which goes through the downspout into my storm drain. That's my rainwater collection, part one. Part two is the pump system. I need to get water from the back of my shop here out to my garden, which is in the front of my shop. I do that through an electric pump. This is set up to deliver essentially hose water pressure to my garden irrigation system. This is an AC powered pump. You could also convert this to run off of DC power and run this as a solar powered system. Part three is the irrigation. The pump basically goes through an underground system out to my garden. The key thing about this is the filtration system. I run a micro drip irrigation system in my gardens and you need to filter the water if you're using rainwater to ensure that it doesn't plug up your system. So I have a two part filtration system that I'll show you. And I also have a very important feature, which is an automatic shut off. So that when both the rain barrels get down to the bottom, the system will shut down to make sure that all the sediment in the bottom of the rain barrels does not go through the pump system or the irrigation system. Very important feature. And then the last feature, part four, which is completely mind blowing, is I have a backup system. So my rain barrels will collect about four days worth of water for irrigating my garden. What if it doesn't rain for five days? What if it doesn't rain for six days? Am I not going to water my garden? Or am I going to drag out a hose with one of those dumb sprinklers that goes like this? Or am I going to hand water my plants? Not around here. This system is fully automated, hands-free. If I don't get rain for five days, I use my house water system. I have a hose backup hooked up to the rain barrel, automatically kicks on, fills the rain barrels back up with hose water, keeps the whole system running hands-free. This thing is amazing. Let's talk about it in detail. I'll show you how it works. Now, before we get started, the first thing I want to talk about is the highest priority here in the Don't Screw It Up workshop, and that's your safety. Now, this job can be incredibly dangerous because it mixes electricity and water, which if you get between those two things, it can kill you. So don't screw around with this job if you don't know what you're doing. This can be incredibly dangerous if you're using an AC pump out in a wet location. I have this set up with a GFCI circuit breaker, I have weatherproof electrical connections. I got an automatic kill switch. If you don't know what any of that stuff means, don't do this job. Hire a professional to do this because this could be really dangerous. So I've included this diagram, which includes all the components of the entire system. I'm not gonna go through all of these on this chart because I'm gonna show you the actual parts in the video. But if you want to rewind and look at this, the left-hand portion of this chart is the rainwater collection system. The bottom portion is the pump. The right-hand area is the irrigation system. And then towards the center there is the hose water backup system. So feel free to rewind and look at this chart if you need to consult any of these details as we go. Here's where the whole system starts. I collect water off of the roof. It comes down my downspout. And then you wanna have what I call a seasonal diverter. This is a diverter 
It basically in this position sends the water down this line into the downspout in the summer. In the winter, I throw that lever, it shuts this one off, sends it back down here through its normal path into my downspout to my storm drain. So you have a seasonal diverter, lets you turn off the system in the winter so that you're not having water go into these and freezing up if you live in the type of climate where I live. You can ignore this black pipe for now. I'm gonna come back and discuss this later. Now, the way these double barrel systems usually work is the water comes down through the downspout through my screen, fills up the first barrel. When it gets almost to the top of this one, it goes through this connector hose. So it will fill this barrel, go to the second barrel, and then it'll fill the second one. When the second barrel fills, it raises the water level of both and then there's a diverter a little bit higher in the back of this rain barrel that then takes the overflow down the back into my downspout and my storm drain. So this is a completely self-running system. No matter how much it rains, if these barrels fill up, it just goes through the overflow back into the downspout. You don't have to worry about these things overflowing. The next feature is these stands that I put the rain barrels on. I built these originally because I was under the impression that if I just raised these up off the ground, I could get enough hose pressure by getting some height here that I wouldn't have to use a pump. That doesn't work. I'm gonna show you an example of why not. But these stands really work. I made these out of uh, four by four landscaping timbers if you just wanna get your rain barrels up off of the ground, which I recommend. The next feature is the mixing valve. So now when I wanna take the water out of the rain barrels and run it through my pump and get it into the garden, you gotta figure out how do you get the water out of both barrels? Do you take it out of one barrel first and then figure out how to get it out of the second one? This is really a very simple gravity-based system. So I just use one of these mixing hoses. You'll find these like for washing machines and things of that nature where it basically takes two hoses and combines them into one. This then goes through a shutoff valve, a filter, which I'll come back to in detail, that goes into my pump. So when I open this valve up, basically gravity drains the water out of the rain barrels through this uh, mixing valve, through my filter, and it will drain both barrels at exactly the same time just a gravity based system. And so when I'm ready to pull the water out of the rain barrels, it comes down through my mixing hose here. Then I open this, here comes your flow. That's how the water comes out. And another feature of this is that all my connections, I use these quick connect uh, hose connectors here. So no threading things on and off. So when I want to take this apart, clean it, winterize it, whatever, boom, there it is. I just made the connection, turn the water on. There it is, no leaks. I mean, this thing's awesome. Down here below the barrels is my pump. I have a little pump housing that I built down there. I'm gonna pull this out and put it on my bench in the shop so I can show you that part in more detail. So here's the pump that I use. This is just in a little pump housing that I built. This is a 110 volt on-demand pump. So as soon as it senses that drop in water pressure when you squeeze the hose nozzle or when the irrigation timer kicks on, it senses that drop in pressure on the outbound side, it'll automatically kick this pump on. So it's an on-demand pump. This one is rated at 45 PSI, which is roughly hose pressure. You can buy these at your local farm supply stores or order these online. They're pretty common. And then you can see on the outbound sides, I always use these quick connect uh, hose attachments. So it's really easy to make repairs on this, to clean everything out, to winterize it, take it apart. Strongly recommend the quick connect hoses so you're not in there using pliers and things. So here's an example of how an on-demand pump works. So I have the pump, it's in the powered on position. I have my four pounds of pressure coming out of the rain barrel here just from my gravity feed. And then over here, I have my makeshift version of my garden irrigation system. Eight o'clock in the morning, that timer clicks on, opens the valve, starts watering. And as that water pressure that was in the line starts to draw, the pump just kicked on. You can hear it running now. So the pump's running, it's drawing the gravity feed from the rain barrel system. It's going through the underground line. Then the timer shuts off in the garden. It briefly repressurizes that line going out to the garden. And there it just clicked off. So that's how an on-demand pump works. So here's the assembled pump housing. I just made this out of pressure treated wood just to keep the elements from raining down on top of this, somewhat protected. But I also want to keep it open because the pump can give off some heat when it runs for a long time. So I want to have some airflow in there as well. It's just a basic pump housing.
Now I initially thought when I first set this up that I could just hook a garden hose up to this and this would run my irrigation system out in the garden. You just don't get a lot of pressure off of this. So when I first set the system up, I thought I could just run some kind of gravity based system. I raised them up on those platforms to give me a little extra water pressure because height equals pressure. I ran that mixing valve so I got both the barrels coming into one hose. I hooked it up to my hose nozzle, I go out to my garden, there it is. That's what you get. Then you might be asking the question I asked, what if you get a little lower, do you get a little more pressure? A little more, go a little lower, get a little more pressure, a little lower. I'm doing the limbo here, a little lower. That's it right there. That's the maximum water pressure you're gonna get out of a gravity-based system. I'm just here to tell you, it's not gonna get the job done. I put my flow pressure meter on here, just in case you don't believe me. I barely moved the needle. That's, uh, looks like about four pounds pressure. Let me lower it down a little more. It's right at four pounds. That's the maximum out of a gravity-based system. You're just not gonna get the job done with that. Hose pressure is 40 to 60 pounds per square inch. Uh, this is four. It's just not gonna get it there. So you just bite the bullet and use a pump. I mean, that's the conclusion I came to. Gravity-based systems for what I'm trying to do here just isn't effective. So when you think about your pump system, you don't want your rain barrels to go completely dry for two reasons. One is if they go to the bottom, any sediment that is in there is gonna go down through the pump and that can diminish the life of your pump and it can pump through your irrigation system and really plug up the system. So you never want the rain barrels to go completely dry. Second reason is that you don't want the pump to run when the rain barrels are dry. Because this pump is running from, on an on-demand basis, it's sensing the demand on the other side of the pump. It doesn't know if there's water coming through it or not. So once the rain barrel runs dry, there's no pressure on the other side, there's no pressure on this side, the pump's just gonna keep running, it'll burn itself out. So you have to have a way to shut the pump off when the rain barrels get low. So the way that I do that is by using something called a float switch. Now this is the brains of the operation. This was probably invented uh, shortly after Thomas Edison discovered electricity, or maybe Thomas Edison invented the float switch after Nikola Tesla discovered electricity. I'm not really sure. But the way this works, it's basically hooked up to an electrical plug, uh, a through plug with a male uh, plug on one side and a female plug on the other side. And it works like a light switch, but it floats. That's why it's called the float switch. So the float switch floats and it controls the power to the pump. So when the rain barrel is full, this thing floats, it's in the up position it's on, just like a light switch. The pump starts running, it's irrigating the garden, it's going down, 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 the level's going down, down, down. Click, it gets to the bottom and it turns the power off when it's in this down position. So when the water level gets low before it gets to the bottom, it's gonna kill the power, shut the pump off. So that keeps the pump from burning out and it keeps the rain barrel from running dry. Then it starts raining, the water comes down the downspout, fills up the barrels, fills up this barrel, starts to go back up, float, float, floats back up, clicks into the on position, the pump is powered back on, now waiting for the irrigation timer in the garden to turn on. So this is a great system. This is like one of the most simple things imaginable, but this is really the brains of the operation. Another important part of the system is the filtration system. If you're using a pump, and an irrigation system, you don't want sediment to go through your pump because that'll deteriorate the life of your pump. And you definitely don't want sediment getting into your irrigation system if you use something like a micro drip irrigation system because it'll start to plug up your system. So the first line of defense against getting sediment in your lines is to have a screen on top of your rain barrel. These are the screens that come with it. This kind of comes with the barrel. It blocks out the big sediment that would come down but this is kind of like using a chain link fence to screen out your rainwater. This isn't very fine. So what I've done is I've added a secondary filter here. This is a super fine stainless steel screening, the type that you would see on the leaf guard uh, gutter guards. Um, so this keeps all the sediment out. I mean, that catches everything. So I got the you know chain link fence version sitting on the top, not catching much. 
I got the real deal down here. This catches all the fine sediment. So I mentioned the first part of the filtration system is the screen. That's where you want to try to keep as much debris out of your rain barrels as possible. But then I also have a secondary filtration system here where this is a fil filter that comes usually with drip irrigation systems. And normally this would be out in your garden right before you go through the drip irrigation. I just took the filter and moved it way upstream in the process here. So this is my micro filtration system before it goes through my pump, before it goes through the underground line. And then I don't need a filtration system in the garden because I moved it upstream here. So let me show you how this works. I turn the water off here with my little handy lever on my mixing valve. You open this bad boy up, just unscrews like this. There's a little screen in here. You just run this under the hose. This is pretty clean right now. But I clean this out maybe once every two weeks or so because I have the micro uh, screen up on the top. I don't get a lot of sediment coming out of here. And once you get sediment in your system, that's a real pain because then you gotta be maintaining this thing all the time. Clean that out, sorry, clean, screw it back on. That's my entire maintenance of this system. That's really all I need to do to this. This thing runs and runs and runs. The only thing I do is clean out this filter. Like I said, I do it once every week or two. Turn my water back on, that's ready to go. And then over here, I have my underground irrigation line that goes out here around the shop out to my garden. I'll show you that in a minute. This is where the pump water comes through this black hose into my underground line out to the garden. So another reason, another feature is the reason that I put this connection here instead of out by the garden is because I have the option to run the whole system off the hose water. If I don't wanna use the rain barrels at all, I can just connect my underground line directly to my hose water and bypass the whole rain barrel system if I want to do that. Some people would say, you know, that's kind of over engineering. But the reason that I do that is because occasionally early in the season, I might want to get the irrigation up and running before I have time to clean out the rain barrels and get the whole system set up with the spring maintenance. And the other reason is because like today, I got to do maintenance on my pump. Uh, so I got to disassemble the whole thing for a day. If it's going to take me more than one day to do that, I could just hook this up to that hose water and just run the whole system off the hose water. Some people call it over engineering. I call it, you know, thinking ahead. Okay, we're getting close to where the action happens. Now I'm in the garden. So this is really where it all starts. This is my garden timer. I have my underground line. So coming out of the rain barrel, it goes through the pump. Pump goes underground, comes up through this black line here. And then this is my irrigation timer. So I have this set to run for one hour a day. Right now it's running at 8 a.m. for one hour. So when this clicks on at 8 a.m., it opens this line. It starts to draw that pressure and the on-demand pump immediately feels that pressure drop and the pump kicks on, starts pumping the rain barrel, pump, pumping the rain water through the whole system. So when this clicks on, I can do it manually here. Uh, eight o'clock in the morning, you're gonna hear this thing go. There it is, just clicked on, pump just kicked on. I got rainwater pumping through my garden here. And this is where the magic happens. The rainwater starts coming through my micro drip irrigation system, drip, 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 drips that rainwater right on the base of each plant. So I'm not watering weeds, I'm not wasting water, I'm not spraying water everywhere. I'm going directly from my rain barrel through the underground system through the timer, drip, 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 right at the base of each plant. That's how you want it to work. So the whole system was working fine, but I still had one problem. I couldn't control the weather. So I was on the road all the time, I'd be traveling. And like I said, the barrels fill up about four days worth of irrigation. I'd be on the road, I'd be looking at my phone saying it hasn't rained in four days, hasn't rained in five days, hasn't rained in six days. I know that the float switch turned the pump off, so at least the pump's not running dry, but my tomato plants aren't getting watered when the barrels run dry. So then I'm thinking, I gotta figure out some way to have a backup system to water the plants when the barrels run dry. So I'm thinking of all these crazy ideas where I can set up some kind of Wi-Fi controller to my hose and have a second system out there where I can turn on a sprinkler through Wi-Fi. And then it came to me, just like on the Wizard of Oz, the answer was in front of me the whole time. It was right in front of my eyes. It's right here. I 
got my supercomputer sitting right here. I got my float switch. The float switch knows when the barrels are empty. So all I had to do is figure out when the barrels are empty and the float switch knows it, I just got to turn on the hose. It's all right here. So I knew that I could buy an electric solenoid valve that when this goes into the off position, it would turn on the hose water. But then I'm thinking, how do I get the hose water out to the garden? So I'm thinking I got to run a whole separate set of hoses out there. I got to have a separate sprinkler system. And then I just step back and I realize it's all right here. It's all right in front of my eyes. All I need to do is get the hose water into the barrel. The rain barrels don't know if it's hose water or rain water. The pump doesn't know if it's hose water or rain water. The irrigation system doesn't know the difference. My tomato plants probably know the difference between hose water and rain water, but don't tell them. So I got the whole system right here. So here's how it works. The rain barrels are full. It runs for one day, two days, three days, four days. It's getting dry. There's no rain in the forecast. It's looking like a drought. The barrels are empty. Boom, there it is. Barrels empty, kicks on my hose water. The hose water fills up the first barrel, comes over the connector, fills up the second barrel, fills it back up, back up, back up, back up, fills it up, fills it up. Boom, there it is. My rain barrel's full. The system's back in action. The pump's ready to go. This system's so ingenious, I can barely believe I came up with it. So the other part that I needed to make this whole system work was something I was aware of called a solenoid valve. Here's a picture of the one that I'm using. It's basically a hose threaded input, a hose threaded output, and an electric controller on the top that controls a gate valve inside. So when this is powered, it's in the closed position because that's when my pump's running and I don't want the backfill working. And then when I turn the power off, that's when my float switch goes down, it opens the valve and turns the backfill hose on. This is my hose water backup. So I leave this open at all times. The only time I close this valve is in the winter. So I always have hose pressure going into that solenoid valve that's gonna open when the rain barrels get low. So that's my backup hose pressure. Now, if you don't know anything about electricity, you definitely wanna have an electrician do this part of the work. But basically what I have here is I have power coming off of my circuit breaker inside. This is a master kill switch. So every time I come out here, when I start doing maintenance, even cleaning out my filter, doing anything with this, I turn the whole system off. I just click that off, shuts the whole system off, shuts the electricity off, because you don't want to mix electricity and water unless you want to meet your maker sooner than you're supposed to. So I shut the whole thing down. So that's my kill switch. The second thing I have here is my power for the pump and for the solenoid that runs the backup hose water system. So the way this works, is <clears throat> this plug goes to my pump and the solenoid. So if I just plug this in, the pump power will be on and the solenoid will be in the closed position. This little plug that basically is a through plug, has a plug on both sides like that, a male on one side, a female on the other. This is for the float switch. So you just put this in here in series and the float switch is like a switch that turns the power on and off for the pump and the solenoid. So my outlet is always on, but then my float switch controls that based on the height of the water. So when the water is high, it powers the pump and the solenoid. So my pump is on demand, it's ready to go. The solenoid is closed, so my hose backup isn't working. When that float switch goes down, clicks down, boom, it turns this switch off, which kills the power to my pump, so it stops running the pump, and it kills the power to the solenoid, which turns it into the open position. So now you see the whole thing. It's a continuously running system. It never stops. I don't have to do anything with it. I turn it on in the spring. It runs until I turn it off in the fall. This thing's incredible. So here's the last feature, this little mister. You're probably like, what's the mister all about? So when I'm sitting in my house having my coffee and I'm wondering, is the irrigation system actually working? I don't want to come out and check it every day. So I just look out the window while I'm drinking my coffee and I can see the mister and I know it's working. It's always working. So thanks for selecting this video. I hope you found it helpful. 
I believe this is the ultimate rain barrel and irrigation setup. It's the best one I've ever seen. Good luck with your next project and don't screw it up.